I received this in my post this morning and as you can see it is a Fine Gael leaflet with Leo Bradcar and Simon Coveney. While we know a lot about Leo Bradcar, Simon Coveney is a more secretive type of fish if you like and I'm going to show the Irish people exactly who Simon Coveney is and what are his connections and why Leo is so friendly to Simon Coveney. We need to go back in time a little bit, a little history lesson, especially for our younger voters. Older generation will remember these uh, scandals, but these scandals were first connections with Fianna Fáil and Charles Hockey. Charles Hockey's son, by the way, is running against me in Dublin Bay North, but that's irrelevant for the moment. Sit back and watch the history lesson because it's very important to understand the connections and how I always say that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil are two cheeks of the same arse and it's always a pretense blame game and that's why they're so cosy in government together. So here we are and I apologise for the quality of the film you are about to see. World in Action investigates the operations of Europe's Mr Meat, the man who makes his money putting the beef into Britain's supermarkets while picking up millions from taxpayers who've been handing out money for nothing. <laughs> Europe's beef business is built on taxpayer subsidies. That's because farmers breed far more cattle than anybody wants. This year alone, European taxpayers will have to cough up some three billion pounds. That's over ten pounds a head for every man, woman and child in Europe to buy up surplus beef. With such huge amounts of money on offer, it's little wonder that the subsidy system has been wide open to abuse. Well, there's no doubt that it is seriously open to fraud and um, we ourselves have uh, collected abundant evidence uh, to demonstrate that. Um, as to exactly how open it is, well, that uh, depends on your standpoint. I would say it's very open. European beef subsidies are not paid directly to the farmers who breed the cattle. Instead, they go to the people who buy them, the beef processors. A subsidy system which was designed to support those working on the land has turned into a welfare state for industrialists. Instead of running an assembly line, the beef processors run a disassembly line. It starts with whole live animals which are slaughtered and reduced to a hundred different components, some of which are the familiar joints of beef which end up on the dinner table. Larry Goodman's company, Anglo-Irish Beef Processors, has made him Europe's biggest beef baron. He's the main supplier of Britain's top supermarkets, Sainsbury, Tesco and Asda. He's also one of Ireland's richest men. Larry Goodman publicly maintains that his business has always been run to the highest of standards. I think as a company uh, we stand uh, for integrity within the industry and we'll continue to do so. Within Goodman's factories it's been an open secret that this is not the case. But until tonight no Goodman employee has dared to speak openly. Patrick McGuinness is an accountant. He worked at many Goodman factories and at the Goodman head office during the 1980s. The philosophy of the company is basically profit maximization. You can only make so much money by doing it right, but it's so easy to make much more by, by abusing the system and all the factories do it. Would you say that Mr. Goodman set that particular tone? Mm, Mr. Goodman set the tone because he controlled the company very tightly. For many years, the biggest beef handout has been the intervention subsidy. Under the intervention scheme, Europe's taxpayers guarantee to buy up huge amounts of surplus beef at top prices. The intervention system was vital to the government companies because at the end of the day, that's where the profits came from. Did European taxpayers get good value for money from this system? Probably not because of the abuses within the system that were uh, practically institutionalized at, uh, within all factories. The intervention rules were that the guaranteed price would be paid according to the weight and quality of each individual animal. The money was paid to the beef barons on a sea of paperwork. The whole basis of the support system is, is documentation and if the documentation shows either more product 
or a higher quality product than, than it is, then you're going to get paid more. All intervention product has to be weighed in, and the, the weights have to be recorded on a document called the IB4. One of the ways of changing the weights was basically to reproduce an IB4. This would be a duplicate copy, and what would happen is that the same details would be written down, except that the weights would be increased by a certain number of kilos. If there was any uh, special notations, such as signatures or, or, or other notation, or even blood on the original document, this was put onto the duplicate. Does this mean that people actually put blood on a, on a freshly created document? Well, you had the, cr the aim of putting the blood and everything else on it was to make it look authentic. Payments are also based on the quality of each animal. This is assessed by a veterinary official who marks the carcass with an indelible grading stamp. The stamps are the property of the officials who keep them securely under lock and key in each factory. Goodman's own promotional videos made great play of this official grading system. Rigorous inspection and grading by ministry officials, followed by careful selection and assessment by the company's own personnel, means Anglo-Irish customers get the beef that they specified. But in Goodman's factories, they used their own bogus stamps to change the grades. It was very easy to change the grade. With a knife, you cut off the uh, grade that's marked on the animal, and you can then put any other grade you like on it. You'd have your own stamps at the factory. Was that supposed to be the way? Uh, no, all grading stamps were supposed to be tightly controlled by the Department of Agriculture. World in Action has obtained these bogus stamps from Goodman factories. The Irish Department of Agriculture, who declined to take part in this program, confirmed in a statement that if a company holds its own set of stamps, this would be illegal. One of the reasons why no Goodman employee has spoken out until now was a company-wide scheme of under-the-table payments. Checks were made out against bogus invoices, endorsed by Goodman's employees, and cashed at local branches of the Allied Irish Bank. The payments were made quarterly, end of March, end of June, end of September, end of December and that was paid to everybody in the company, basically. Everybody from the shop floor up? Yes. How much money do you think was paid out? It's very difficult to be definite about it, figure, but you know, approximately three million a year. Goodman took great advantage of the export refund subsidy. With the backing of Irish politicians, including the Prime Minister, Charles Hohey, he went after huge contracts in Libya, Egypt, Iran and Iraq. Most Middle East customers want their animals killed by Islamic ritual slaughter, known as halal. But this method needs more effort than the usual technique. So at Goodman Plants, that didn't always happen. You can just say that you slaughtered halal and then you'd have various stamps and forms to, to mark the, the livestock that was slaughtered halal. These were Islamic stamps with Islamic writing on them to show that it was a land slaughtered. Does this mean that the company had its own stamp? Yeah, we had our own stamps. But Goodman's biggest subsidized coup came when he linked up with Saddam Hussein. The butcher of Baghdad needed millions of tons of beef to feed his troops, and Europe's Mr. Meat was just the man to sell it to him. There was many different sources for the meat. There was fresh Irish meat, there, was, there would have been intervention meat, there would have been frozen meat. It may have been halal slaughtered, it may not have been halal slaughtered. It could have been cow, it could have been bull, it could have been anything. Boxes of old frozen meat from European intervention stores were brought by the truckload to the Goodman-owned Ulster Cold Stores, Craig Avon, Northern Ireland. Here a transformation took place. For a solid 18 months, old frozen meat was turned into new. Some of it were noticed was dated far back as 1974. I would have been 13 year old at the time. Did you rebox all of it? Yeah, all of it was reboxed as killed within the last week or two, slaughtered within the last week or two. Some of it was in pretty bad shape as well, it just didn't look too good. Some of it was torn and green, some been quite dirty, some of it was freezer burnt, some had obviously been thawed and refrozen, which uh, 
you can tell that by the colour of the bag that it's in. It, uh, the blood comes out and it crystallises brown. Even the top of the beef looks as if there's a, a fuzz on it. You're saying you reboxed all the meat, no matter what shape No matter what shape it was in, it was all reboxed. Some of, at the start, we used to throw it to one side. But then was one of the chaps came out of the office and just told us, put the whole lot through. It didn't matter. Just get it all out. The whole system was that you, you, you switch product to show what the customer wanted. Even and, if the meat was... And that, if that meant reboxing, you reboxed the, the, the meat to show what the company thought he was getting. When customers visited Goodman's Ulster Cold Stores, a miracle happened. The reboxers, known as the 18, disappeared into thin air. Usually we got a phone call, we got a warning that there was somebody coming, and we had to take the lane apart and hide it away. It was hid away in a cold store and quickly sweep up the floor any dirt that was about. And sometimes we also had to hide in the cold store ourselves, keep out of the way. You mean you hid in a cold store? Yeah, the men, the whole, all the men that were working there had to hide in the cold store. and didn't want anybody to see us. Mr. Goodman, World in Action. Can I ask you, please? No, I'm not interested in talking to you. Can I ask you why your managers obstructed a customs investigation in Waterford in 1986? Mr. Goodman, can I please ask you why bogus stamps were routinely used in your plants? Mr. Goodman, can I please ask you, why was documentation routinely falsified in your plants? Mr. Goodman, can I please ask you, can I please ask you why rotten meat was routinely reboxed at your plants? Mr. Goodman, can I please ask you, why did all your employees get under the table payments? Mr. Goodman? It is the national governments of each individual country who are responsible for tackling fraud on the European taxpayer. In the Irish government, Larry Goodman has some of his strongest supporters. The links between the Irish Prime Minister, Charles Hohey, and Europe's Mr. Meat go back a long way. Goodman gave money to Hohey's Fianna Foyle party. For his part, Charles Hohey publicly promoted Goodman. At the very same time that customs investigators were warning that Goodman's operations were strongly suspected of involvement in fraud, the Irish Prime Minister was endorsing Goodman for millions in Irish and European grants. This programme of investment, the largest ever by an Irish private company, was formally launched by Ireland's Prime Minister, Charles J. Hawley, together with AIBP Chairman and Chief Executive Larry Goodman. And when allegations about the customs investigation at Goodman's Waterford plant finally surfaced in the Irish Parliament some two years later, there were extraordinary outbursts from both Charles Hohey and Larry Goodman. Now, I knew that he knew uh, the particular facts that I was alleging, and he denied them point blank. And uh, I found this extraordinary, to say the least. But I wasn't that surprised because of the political connection between Larry Goodman and the Fianna Fáil party. The Taoiseach accused me of sabotage. Charles Hawhey said I was indulging in national sabotage. Again, this was extraordinary. And an immediate campaign to destroy the information I had, to destroy my credibility, started at political level. No doubt about that. And it's not just in Dublin that Larry Goodman has his supporters. World in Action has discovered that in recent years, Goodman's companies were being considered as the principal target of a major European investigation. It didn't happen after assurances from the Irish authorities that they themselves had a wide-ranging investigation of Goodman in hand. There is no evidence of any such investigation. The current European Commissioner for Agriculture is Ireland's Ray McSharry. He frequently takes the opportunity to speak out against fraud within the subsidy system. He declined to take part in this program. His staff told World in Action that he was too busy. Commissioner McSharry knows Larry Goodman well. He too started life selling cattle. He's a former Irish Minister for Agriculture. One of McSharry's sons works as a sales manager for Goodman International. The Commissioner's son-in-law is part of the team which audits Goodman's accounts and also a cousin of Goodman's former Deputy Chief Executive, Brian Britton. McSharry himself has appeared in Goodman's own promotional literature, here helping celebrate a contract with a German supermarket back in 1981. But McSharry's most controversial connection with Goodman came last year. 
Goodman had secretly borrowed 500 million pounds from 33 international banks, which he couldn't repay. The Dutch bank AMRO was threatening Goodman with liquidation. The bank held off after a request by the Dutch agriculture minister, Herit Brax. Brax had previously received a telephone call from Ray McSharry asking him for help. In the breathing space, Prime Minister Charles Hohey recalled the Irish government from its holidays and pushed through emergency legislation to prevent Goodman's companies going under. McSharry insists he did not intervene on Goodman's behalf. I made no request to Mr Brax to intervene vis-a-vis -vis any particular bank in favour of Goodman International. It would be presumptuous of me anyway to think that my initiatives would be instrumental in keeping this firm in business. I doubt it. However, if it did help, I am rather pleased. I am still persuaded that uh, Mr. Brax was invited to intervene specifically in favour of Goodman International at the behest of a commissioner. And that does not seem to me to be a proper course of action. The Commission's responsibility is not to be there seeking to protect the commercial or the financial interest of a particular trader. Okay, so you've just seen the uh, absolute scandal of the meat industry. And this is in a backdrop where farmers can't even get proper beef prices. But look, it's old news, you might say. Old news. Larry Goodman. Um, involved in all of this sort of scandal, uh, making uh, his own stamps, making halal stamps to be sent off to Muslim countries. But people might say that's, that's history. What's that got to do with us? What's it got to do with Simon Coveney? Well, what I'm saying to you is there's clearly the Fianna Fáil connection there with Sean Hawkey is running in the election. And now let's bring it up a little bit uh, more modern. Please watch the next excerpt that I have for you. Excuse me guys, I hate to intrude. Um, are you uh, coming from Bilderberg by any chance? We're uh, in that general area. Okay, can you, no, are you able to tell no, us what? No, if you don't mind. Okay, what, what are you guys talking about there? You're not going to start. No? <laughs> We're out for a walk. Okay. Can you give us a hint as to the agenda this year? Yeah, just publicly out yeah, there. We're, we're just out for a walk. That's okay, fine. no, that's fine. <laughs> The agendas are public, but a lot of the times the stuff doesn't get published what's truly talked yeah, about. Five in there. Yeah. <laughs> right now, Joe, with your mind stuff. I, 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 <laughs> with your mind go away. We're just trying to take an afternoon walk. Okay. Well, we're just trying to document I what's going on there. Stop being ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. Well, people, that, people are looking at this as a conspiracy theory, and you guys can kind of clear, clear the air right now. Because no a lot conspiracy, but we're not going to start making statements either. Okay, so it's no conspiracy, but but it's kind of secretive, right? Are you guys enjoying the Bilderberg meeting? How's it going, guys? Enjoying uh, Copenhagen? Can you tell us anything about what's happening inside? Can we show you around or buy you some drinks? Or buy you a meal? You sure? I mean, we kind of have to do this since you guys are so not transparent and very so, you're, you guys are so secretive, we kind of have to like figure out some way to communicate because proper communication can solve anything. That's what I was trying to tell them, they can clear the air right now. Yeah, you guys could clear the air, get rid of the theories. There's so many people making so many bad assumptions about you guys and you guys could get rid of that right now. Are you American? Yes, New York City. What about yourself? I'm out for America for this. Yes. I came from Canada. <laughs> go back. Really? <laughs> Why should I go back? I like Copenhagen. Do you get, can we give you guys a tour around Copenhagen? Do you want to see the... There's a beautiful water fountain right up there. No. I like walking too, though.
Okay, so what are you guys gonna do with Putin? I mean, you guys were discussing Putin inside. Yeah, did, did Samson get in trouble for talking to us? The yes. more quiet you guys are, the more mystery and theories you guys will bring out. And the more assumptions people are going to make, make up bad things that you guys are doing in there. Because if you're doing something good, you usually do it in broad daylight. But if you're doing something bad, you want to do it in secrecy. And it kind of seems like you guys are full of, full of you know, a lot of secrecy. To be honest with you, any secrecy. It's, it's a sort of discussion where people come together to debate global global issues mm -hmm. uh, from all sides of the political spectrum. Yeah. Therefore, like that. Yeah. I hear you try to get into Putin's mind. You're bonkers. Huh? The big guy's mad. No, 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 no. no. I'm just working. There's obviously reasons why we're concerned. Why? Because of the type of people are in here and the amount of secrecy and the topics discussed. Etan Davignon admitted. Right. Didn't Etan Davignon admit that um, they were responsible for forming the European Union? I thought like that was openly admitted that members within Bilderberg did that. Yeah, he said it in the EU Observer. David Yan actually said the Bilderberg Group was instrumental in creating the, the Euro. He did say that. We don't, we don't think that everyone in Bilderberg is necessarily involved in anything yeah. nefarious, but we, we think there's an inner circle within the inner circle. I can say it's my first time here. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's an open discussion yeah. where people come share ideas, mm -hmm. have, uh, there we go. Have, have conversations. Yeah. It's nothing more or less than that in my experience. Okay. When Goldman Sachs, Google, the IMF, World Bank are involved. <laughs> I want to, we, I'm just... You're trying to create stories. We are. We are because you guys are the story though. You guys are the story. I, I can give you a handkerchief. You? We can also put down the cameras and talk and we can buy you guys beers. Beers are on us. I, I would say the people that invited you for, for your first time might be scoping you out to see if you'll play along or not. I don't buy into every conspiracy theory. No, no. no we, don't. we want to be nice and courteous about it. It's just impossible to get any kind of a... No, nobody. Yeah, but there's no obligation on anybody. No. So, you know, shouldn't really be in people's faces. Right. Well, you're, you're public figures now when you, when you attend something like Bilderberg. Uh, this is kind of what comes with the territory now. According to you. No, you, you'll, I think you'll see it if you attend more. I would encourage you not to, though. Um, from, from what I heard, there's some nefarious things that go on. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're up to anything nefarious at all. But I can assure you I'm not. Okay, I, I, I tend to believe you. <laughs> but I think some of the people in there are. So, just a fair, fair warning, a little heads up, I guess. I think I'm going to have to make up my own mind. Okay. <laughs> yep. Tell us what to do to help spur dialogue. We'll do it. To help spur communication between the two sides. Nothing. How else are people not supposed to assume the worst when there's no communication? I mean, you guys are just really, really more implicating yourselves than anything else. Which is sad because everything could be over with proper communication. You guys could go into the museum here too. My scarf is still available if you want it. They're going into the museum here, which is private property, and we can't go on. They're going into a limo. I do appreciate your candidness and, and honesty, so thank you for that. Thank you. Good job to do as well. Yes, exactly. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Yeah. You guys got room for one more? <laughs> I can go in the front. I could, I could, I could sit in the front. Not sure if I can for you. So, somewhat of a rare opportunity just arose as we saw a couple of Bilderberg members out for a little bit of a stroll without their security guards following them. So I uh, turned around and said, hey, are you guys coming from the conference? 
And uh, he said, oh, I'm coming from a conference house. And I said, Bilderberg, well, you've seen the video. <laughs> and uh, there you have it. Okay, you have just seen a modern clip of Simon Coveney with Peter Sutherland and they were after coming out of the Bilderberg meeting. For those of you who don't know the Bilderberg group or meeting, perhaps you should Google them and educate yourself. You'll see a lot of good people from around the world, uh, cameramen going after Sutherland. They didn't really know who Coveney was at the time, is my understanding. And you can see certain questions that they're concerned about what they're putting to Coveney about who brought in the euro and stuff like that. So at a very young age, this Simon Coveney fella seems very well connected. Let's watch the next clip where uh, Paul Murphy TD is questioning Simon Coveney, who was the Minister of Agriculture, and he's questioning him about is the beef industry good today and are there any connections from times long ago? Let's just see. Minister, if he or his department has any concerns about possible future effects on the reputation of Irish beef arising from the involvement of Larry Goodman's company, ABP Foods, as the first major distributor of Irish beef in America. I, 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 um, obviously, I, you know, I welcome all questions here, but I... I I mean, I think you know, you're trying to infer something here that, that just um, I don't think is relevant or exists. First of all, um, um, last week we were in the States. We were in uh, New York, uh, Washington and Boston over three days. Uh, practically the entire beef industry was out there. It wasn't just ABP. Uh, it was Keepak, it was Dawn, it was Slaney Meats, it was Foil Meats, it was uh, multiple others. Right? And they were all doing deals. And that's what they were there for. Uh, meeting um, potential customers. For the first time in 16 years, we're able to sell a high quality premium product into the largest beef market in the world. 11 million tons of beef are consumed in the States every year. The average American eats twice the volume of beef that the average European be uh, eats each year. Okay? Uh, ABP are the largest beef processor in Ireland and Britain. Um, they run uh, a pretty good show from my experience of them. Uh, they have very, very modern plants uh, and they kill a lot of cattle. Uh, and it is not a surprise that the largest beef processor in Ireland um, was sitting down uh, putting a, a partnership together with the largest food distributor in the, in the United States. And I am not going to allow and have not allowed personalities or history uh, um, you know, uh, in terms of, of names or companies or anything get in the way of what is a very positive story for the food industry moving into the rest of the year. Thank you, Minister. Uh, and, you know, I think what's being raised here, to be honest with you, um, is a bit of a distraction. Deputy Paul Murphy. Thank you. Um, no, I, I would share in the, the view that it's to be welcome that Irish beef exporters can export uh, to the US, but the question is, um, is it in no way problematic that now the face, whether we like it or not, of that export um, is a man who was in charge of a company who was previously found by a tribunal to have been repackaging meat and uh, meat byproducts and offal from all over the world as Irish? Is that not problematic? Um, I'm not drawing any inferences that aren't there. Um, I think it's the case that you as a minister welcomed the deal, which is the biggest of all the deals uh, that was done. And we can think back to 1987 when there was a previous major big deal uh, by this man and his company, um, welcomed by the Irish government, um, which obviously turned out to be a, a disaster in terms of uh, export credit insurance taken on by the taxpayer and the cost of that uh, landing on, on the taxpayer. Um, Thank you, Minister. You know, I mean, look, let me just reassure people on this, you know, and I can only speak for myself as Minister over nearly four years. Uh, my department keeps a very tight um, you know, regulatory um, uh, responsibility uh, 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 with, with all of the beef companies in Ireland. Uh, there's no animal killed in Ireland without being supervised by someone in my department. Most of them vets. Um, uh, and that goes for ABP as well as all of the others. Um, so, you know, the, uh, um, we export beef to 45 different countries, 
all of the big players are involved in, uh, in, in that export story. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I, um, if we were to, um, uh, to, to, to refer to, you know, the, the distant past on a regular basis um, uh, and make uh, inferences from that, you know, I think, you, you know, I, I, I'm just not sure what that would serve, quite frankly. Um, I mean, personally, I have little or no relationship with, um, uh, with the individual that you've referred to. We only have, we've only approved, Deputy, two plants at the moment to export beef to the United States. Very soon there'll be a third, and there'll be multiple other plants then that will be going through the approval process over the next couple of months. Thank you. Um, Deputy Murphy, I've um, so, final so, uh, reply. So, like I said, I am comfortable and confident that all of the companies that are exporting beef to the United States will be able to maintain the reputation that is hard-earned in the beef I'll business come back to the minister. We're, of high quality and premium product. Time now, uh, yeah, I, well, I hope they will. Um, the, the only, I mean, the, the minister used the phrase the distant past, but you don't have to go back to 1987 um, to find um, questionable uh, practices happening uh, in a plant owned by this company, uh, obviously implicated in the, the horse meat scandal. And that's two years ago uh, at most. It's not the distant past. Um, it should be recognised. The man in question is obviously, or at least previously was, at the centre of a nexus relationship between agribusiness and politicians. If you read the tribunal reports, it pops up again and again about this man meeting Charlie Hawhey in his home. So, do these people have influence? Um, have they, I mean, the beef industry, as detailed by Pat Rabbit in this house a number of years ago, made significant donations to the major Sorry, establishment Deputy, parties, Fianna Fáil. Please, uh, please, Deputy, be careful about what you're saying. S certainly. I, don't no, like, I, have no, I have no issue about your naming the person. It's in, it's in the public domain, but any suggestions or allegations of wrongdoing against the person outside the house is not in order. Yeah, no, I, I'm not making... Um, any new allegations or anything like that about anybody. But the point is, so these things are known facts. We, then it's a known fact that this man uh, is the biggest now beef export to the US and the minister doesn't really have a problem with that and doesn't think that that could cause damage to other beef exporters who don't have this murky um, questions over previous business practices, not just in the distant past, but more recently. Thank you. Final reply. Uh, we are the only European country that is allowed to export beef into the United States because of those standards, because of the result of an inspection system, uh, sorry, of an inspection uh, visit that came from the United States last summer, which, which, which involved inspections of a number of ABP plants, which were excellent. Um, I mean, personally, I have little or no relationship with, um, uh, with the individual that you've referred to. Um, I mean, personally, I have little or no relationship with, um, uh, with the individual that you've referred to. Um, I mean, personally, I have little or no relationship with, um, uh, with the individual that you've referred to. Okay, we have just seen uh, in that clip Simon Coveney basically saying... I don't know the individual that well, or words to that effect. And the individual they're talking about is Larry Goodman. This is very worrying to me, and it should be very worrying to the Irish people, that Simon Coveney basically says he doesn't know this individual that well and has no real relationship with him. That is simply not true. Larry Goodman, sat at the head table at Simon Coveney's wedding. Larry Goodman is Simon Coveney's bride's uncle and they are very well connected. You may remember the company called Greencore. Greencore are the company that were involved in the horse meat scandal with the Irish meat being supplied from the UK with the bolognese, the spaghetti bolognese. The sauce provided by Larry Goodman's company. But who is Greencore? Who is the CEO of Greencore? The CEO of Greencore is none other than Patrick Coveney, the brother of Simon Coveney. And all of the other companies are connected with Larry Goodman. That's the first scandal. And to say I have no relationships and given the impression he doesn't know him is absolutely terrible. Simon Coveney went jetting around America putting Larry Goodman's companies first as being top grade companies 
and his own brother's company's Green Corps while they were involved in the horse scandal. So it appears to me Simon Coveney's and the Coveney family tentacles go everywhere. Let's move on. Modern day. I was in the court during the European elections and similar to these elections there are an awful lot of people who are not getting on RTE. Why? Because RTE have got a strategy of elections now and they keep people like me and others off who know the truth and want Irish people to know the truth. I brought an application to the High Court and of course RTE won that with public money to keep people who are telling the truth off the airwaves. But of course the difficulty is all High Court judges are appointed by Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael, those two cheeks of the same arse. But that's not the most worrying thing. The most worrying thing is then let's look into RTE. The strategy they come up with. Who is their director of strategy? Have you guessed yet? It's Rory Coveney. Yes, correct. Another brother of Simon Coveney. This is what's wrong in this country. This is what's wrong with the likes of RTE. This is what's wrong with cosy cartels in government. That's why uh, Fine Fáil and Fine Gael can sit so tightly together in government. During this election they'll say, oh no, we can't sit together. But yet, when a new government is formed, it will be these guys again. And we need to keep exposing the connections of these families and their connections all over government and all over the corporations that now rule and rule this country. So that's my exposure number one video. Another three will follow if I have time. All right, folks. Shocking, isn't it? Over and out. Thank you.